Okay, this is my final exam, and I'm going to work through the solution. I made these problems, but they're all, of course, you know, you see these same kind of problems in a lot of different places, but these are the ones I made. Um, so I'm going to work on each problem as a separate video. Uh, hopefully you can be able to find them all. Also, I, I did make an equation sheet uh, for the students. Um, I don't really want to go through this stuff, but I might, I might refer to this as we go on. But so let's get started with the first problem. So here is a ladder. This is this is ice. You can't tell. It says ice. That's not ice. And so I have a five meter long ladder against a wall of ice. There's no friction up here. That makes it a little bit easier. And it leans at a 42 degree angle. I put that right there uh, above the horizontal with a mass of 12 kilograms. What's the coefficient of friction? Minimum coefficient of friction so that it doesn't slip. So let me just redraw the ladder by itself and draw all the forces acting on the ladder just so it looks a bit better. So the first force I have is the uh, the gravitational force. The gravitational force actually pulls on every part of the ladder, uh, but we can model this force as though it were pulling at one single point, the center mass, which is the center of the ladder. So we have that right here, mg. Okay, now what is touching the ladder? The other two forces, there's actually three forces touching the ladder. The first one is this ice wall is pushing on it, but it has no friction, so it can only be perpendicular. I'll call this N2. And then down here I have the grounds pushing up N1. Notice these are both normal forces, that's why it's N, which means perpendicular. It has to be perpendicular to the surface. And then finally, you notice here that if the ladder is in equilibrium, then it can't, there's no way I can add these forces up to zero because there's nothing pushing this way. So I need another force. I'll put it right here, uh, F friction, and that's that. Okay, so if that ladder is in equilibrium, the following three things are true. Number one, F net x equals zero. Number two, f net y equals zero. So the net force in the x and the y direction has to be mass times acceleration, but if it's in equilibrium, the acceleration is zero. So that's that. And then finally, the torque about some point, the net torque about some point torque net O equals zero, where torque as a scalar would be R F sine theta. Uh, so this is the uh, force applied. This is the distance from the force to where the, from the point they want to calculate the torque about to the force, and this is the angle between F and R. Uh, okay, let's start writing these equations. Let's write the net. Oh, and then also I have this. I know that there's a relationship between these two, right? Because if it's friction, and we're looking at the minimum friction coefficient, so we're going to get the maximum frictional force. So I'm going to say frictional force magnitude is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. And that's not a scalar equation because friction's this way and normal's that way. They couldn't be a scalar. It's normally less than or equal to, but in this case we're at that part right where it's about to slip. Okay, so let's write down the x equation first. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and substitute in this for this. So I have F net X. It's going to be N2 minus mu S N1 equals zero. So that's one equation. Now I can't solve for mu S because I don't know N1 and N2. So that's not very useful. Next equation F net Y. So I have uh, N1 minus mg equals zero. Now you notice here these are vectors, but these are scalars because I'm in the just in the y direction. Okay, so in this case I actually can solve for uh, N1. I can I know what m is and I know what g is, so I could say N1 equals mg. I could put that in up here, but still I don't know mu or mu s or n2, so that doesn't really help. Okay. Now, so let's put that right there. Now the torque equation. Now for this, we're going to have to pick um, a point about which to calculate the torques. And it doesn't matter. The you'll get the same answer, but it will be easier in certain ways. So I'm going to pick 
this point down here, O. Why do I pick that point? At that point, I have two forces that pass through the point about which I calculate torques. So neither of these two forces will have a torque because the torque arm, R, is zero. So they're gone. So let's say that's that. So torque net O equals this torque due to N1. Now, that's, is that going to be a positive or negative torque? If it would make it go clockwise, that's a negative torque. So this is going to be negative torque. And I could use, oh, this is 5 meters long. So L is 5. So this is going to be R. Uh, that angle right there is going to be, um, if that's 42, that would be 180 minus 42. But let's see, that's 42. That's 42 also. I actually can use this angle. I'll get the same thing. So let's just call this theta. So this is going to be equal to N2 times L times sine of theta, and it's going to be negative. That's the torque due to that one. Now the other torque I need to consider is the gravitational force. And if I look right here, uh, this, let's see, is this angle, which angle is theta? So this is theta. So that's theta sub c, so that's theta right there. So if I take the perpendicular component of the gravitational force, it'd be the cos mg cosine theta, and I could use that to calculate the torque. So I'm gonna get plus mg L over two cosine theta. You could do the sine of that angle too. The sine of this uh, angle is the cosine of that angle. So, uh, and that has to equal zero. So there you go. Okay, so now I have these three equations with three unknowns I can solve. Let's solve this one for N2, and I got that one for N1 and put it all in that equation right there. So I'm gonna switch over to a sheet of paper. So I'm gonna solve that for N2. I have uh, N2 L sine theta equals mg L over two cosine theta. I just moved it to the other side, the L's cancel. Divide by sine theta, I get N2 equals mg over 2 cosine theta over sine theta. So this is mg over 2 tangent theta. And I just have a number for that, right? That's just a number. Because I know m, I know g, I know 2, I know theta. So let's go back up and put everything into the first equation. So I had this n2 minus mu s n1 equals 0. So I'm going to solve this for mu s. So mu s equals n2 over n1. So I'm going to put this in for n2, mg over 2 tangent theta. And then n1, I'm going to put in mg. So I get mg cancels. OK, so now I get mu s equals 1 over 2 tangent theta. Now we can put in our calculator. Turn on the calculator, clear the last problem. I'll say 2, enter. My angle is 42, 42 tangent times. And then I'll take 1 over that. And I get 0 0.56. There you go.